Good morning, everyone. Uh, so good to see you here. I see uh, a lot of familiar faces, so hi again. Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Rohit Gulati. I am a principal product manager in Microsoft. I focus on one of the eight products in Microsoft Entra, uh, which is Verified ID. Uh, I'm here to talk about what's new in Entra. I, I'm sure by now, uh, I'm guessing everybody knows what is Microsoft Entra. Uh, we have been talking about Entra being a platform and not just one product for some time now. Uh, but if you're new, I'll just do a, maybe a, a quick primer for folks who are new on the Entra story of the platform. Uh, as identity admins, practitioners, service leads, uh, we have uh, uh, a lot of things that are on our plate to deal with things on identity threads. How do we look at identities coming from across systems, uh, identities not just only from workforce, but coming from the consumer side of the world. Uh, in this era of remote onboarding, a lot of us work remotely. How do we and manage and deal with identities coming remotely into our network? So Microsoft Entra uh, has got eight products in its portfolio. So it's a platform uh, under three categories. Identity and access management category covers uh, Entra ID, which is uh, which was formerly known as Azure Active Directory. I'm sure uh, most of you have Azure AD or Entra ID deployed for your workforce environment. Uh, then we have other. Uh, there are two more uh, products under the IAM uh, category for us. Uh, we have external identities. How do we deal with B2B and B2C uh, user accounts? And then we have the governance capability. How do you deal with identities? How do you manage those identities? How do you provision those identities? And how do you do attestation for those identities? Then we have a new category called as a network access, which is the bottom layer. <laughs> uh, uh, this uh, bottom layer is uh, Microsoft's entry into security service edge offering, uh, which is one of the categories that you hear from the analysts like uh, Gartner. Um, we have two products in that offering, internet access and private access. Uh, internet access, as the name suggests, uh, helps you secure your traffic going to Microsoft 365 apps and SaaS apps like Salesforce, ServiceNow, any app that is integrated with Intra ID. And then we have uh, private access, like how can I implement a zero trust network access solution for my line of business apps, apps that I own in my network, apps that are deployed as, uh, let's say, VMs on Azure, AWS, Google Cloud, or as past services, uh, how I can go VPN-less. Uh, in this era of remote onboarding, a lot of us use VPN client, and maintenance of such clients is a problem. How I can go VPN-less is what private access is all about. Uh, I'll cover a bit on it as we go through the story. And OK. Uh, on the right hand side, just assume there was a green block on the slide. <laughs> uh, that category is the new innovation category. Uh, and that is where people like me shine. <laughs> In the new innovation category, we have a product called as Verified ID, which is uh, Microsoft's implementation of verifiable credential. Uh, I have a, a case study to talk about today. Some interesting patterns coming from Verified ID, so we'll cover that. And then we have uh, workload identity as a product uh, in the new innovation category. Uh, most of us are aware about service accounts. Uh, when we provision apps, we usually have service accounts. But when you take these accounts for lifecycle management, look at permissions, when you provision app permissions, how do you ensure that your app is not over permissioned to do a task? So workload identity is that uh, work area or product stream that allows you to manage your uh, app permissions. And the last product under the new innovation category is Entra Permissions Management, uh, which is our multi-cloud infrastructure entitlement management offering. Quite a mouthful. But yes, that's a category from Gartner called KIM or CIEM. Uh, that's our offering. We acquired a company called CloudNox two years ago. It's part of our Entra stack now. And you will see that new uh, innovation product streams will start showing up in, in a more integrated way across the IDAM stack as well as the network access stack. So 
uh, I have 30 minutes, so I'm gonna just rush through the common slides, but talk more about what's new, because I'm guessing that will be of more interest. But I'm here uh, for the first half, so please reach out if there are more questions. And we have deep dive sessions and workshops for various topics. So starting with Entra ID, uh, or it was called as Azure Active Directory in the past. Uh, it is the cloud mastered identity and access management offering that not only helps you provision cloud identities, but also helps you manage your on-premise hybrid landscape. Uh, just uh, by the statistics, uh, I was at the conference uh, yesterday and one of my colleagues was mentioning that when we look at customers using Entra ID, 48% of our customers of the billions that we have, 48% are only using cloud identity, 52% are still hybrid. Uh, and uh, you can imagine that scale is high, and we understand why it is important, not just legacy apps, but you're also supporting maybe some regulations, some requirements coming from the system. So Entra ID offers a model where you could connect to hybrid environments. Uh, it offers uh, uh, a conditional access framework where uh, you can give access based on conditions. Those conditions could be admin defined, like are you the right user coming from the right group, coming from the right location, coming from a compliant device, but some patterns could be behavioral, like are you a risky user, can I see that there is a risk signal coming from the user? If yes, then how do I make sure I can offer a secure access to that user? Uh, in terms of seamless user experience, I spoke about the split of hybrid and online. Uh, we want to make sure we give seamless experience, uh, single sign-on. A lot of times when we use the acronym SSO, it could also mean same sign-on, where I'm duplicating accounts and applications. Here I'm referring to single sign-on, uh, ensuring that when you're accessing a web app, a client-server app, you have the best of the class experience. Even for mobile apps, can we use models which offer native authentications coming from iOS and Android? So those kind of patterns are provided. And then unified identity management, uh, which means when you look at a life cycle of a user account, in most companies, the entry point is the HR system. So how do you make sure when the provisioning happens, uh, the provisioning happens uh, to your target directory store as well, and then it flows to the various applications. Uh, that could be one path. The other path could be, I'm still an on-prem hybrid customer. I still am doing on-prem directory provisioning first, but then I'm going to cloud. So. Uh, the unified identity management stream covers how do we make sure we provision accounts. There could be a pattern where I have to down provision accounts. I started provisioning accounts in cloud, but I have some legacy apps that still need accounts in the setup. So Entra ID offers that as a platform. Um, I'm gonna go through quickly on the standard slide, but I wanna talk about what's new in Entra ID uh, container as such. So there are 3,300 plus applications in our gallery that are pre-integrated for single sign-on, but there are patterns available using uh, standard protocols like OpenID Connect, SAML, and you can bring your own app as well. Uh, when it comes to uh, applications, uh, this slide, we call this slide as secure hybrid access slide, uh, which means uh, you see on the bottom left, on, uh, for me, uh, there are applications that are showing up on premises how do I bring those applications that may be using, let's say, Kerberos or uh, WebSocket protocols or header-based authentications to the modern authentication environment? Uh, there are two types of patterns that are available for such connections. Uh, one, at, uh, one pattern is uh, through the Microsoft offering called as uh, App Proxy, uh, which is Microsoft Entra App Proxy. I'll detail this out as we go to private access, but that's a native offering available. With, think of it like a a reverse proxy that can also be a protocol translator for you. And then since it's doing that protocol translation on outbound 443, uh, you're not opening a lot of ports. It's just outbound 443, and you can still offer modern auth protocol support for that environment. And on the extreme left for me is uh, support from uh, controllers like F5 Scam. They, they support uh, a connection to Entra ID for legacy apps as well. And on the right hand side for me are uh, SaaS apps and the uh, cloud hosted apps that you may run on any of the hyperscalers. Now let's look at some of the things that we are building new. Um, 
and other stats. Uh, I think I see some faces from Gartner. One of my colleagues who was doing the presentation at Gartner, he mentioned some uh, glaring fact. Uh, I think as Microsoft, uh, we assume that we enabled a feature called security defaults, which means even for free tier subscriptions, if you turn it on, you're enabled for MFA. But to our surprise, only 40% of intra ID tenants are enabled for MFA. So if, if I have to tell you what would be your one takeaway, if you're not doing MFA, you're not doing the right thing for your customer, for your consumer base. So please enable MFA. Uh, there are multiple patterns available uh, yeah, for uh, authentication methods. You could use Authenticator app. Uh, you can get to the uh, passwordless journey through Windows Hello for Business. Uh, you could also look at certificate-based authentication and FIDA2 security two keys. What's coming new? Uh, I'm sh can I see a show of hand? How many of you know what is passkey? Uh, okay, I see some hands. Great. So passkey um, as a, a simple layman family friendly term, I'm no longer using passwords, but I'm using strong credentials. But on a technical term, I look at it as a, a phishing resisting credential, which is compliant to the web authentication standard. And uh, it can allow you patterns where these keys could be device bound or could uh, be syncable as well. What we are bringing now, uh, we spoke about pass keys. Uh, you know some of the uh, major implementers of this motion. We see now passkey is coming into consumer space as well. Uh, with the current work that we have done with both the OEM vendors, Android and iOS, Apple, sorry, Android and Apple. Uh, so uh, you will start seeing uh, authenticators supporting passkeys uh, natively. Uh, the first iteration, uh, I know we are friends, so I can talk about that. Uh, you will see us announcing this major thing on March 18th, uh, where Using your authenticator, you can configure intra ID based pass keys. It'll go through iterations. Uh, there are things that we need to work with Apple. Uh, Google, uh, Google Android is a bit open that can allow multiple pass key providers to register, while Apple is not so open. Uh, if you look at uh, Apple, they only allow uh, f the first providers as themselves. And then there's only a second slot. So if a user of yours has gone to a public site and registered a passkey, then you cannot do an enterprise passkey registration. And that second slot gets reserved. So we're working with Apple. It will come in the future iterations. There will be syncable keys as well in future. So the first iteration is coming out on March 18. Um, conditional access, uh, I, th I think everybody knows uh, the basic framework around it. It helps you implement zero trust network access. Uh, what we will uh, this is something now available as public preview. There's a new dashboard that shows up on Intra portal where you could look at your license utilization. I don't know if you have seen this. Uh, okay, great. I see one hand. If you have not, please go ahead. It is something that if you are implementing or using conditional access that will help you look at how is the usage pattern within your enterprise, how the license assignment has happened as well. And you can obviously then drive insights through it. There, there are a few more things I'll call out that are in coming in public preview this quarter. The quarter has not ended, so this slide is early, so, and we are friends, so I can talk about that. So things, some things are already live, some things are happening this Friday. So uh, the PIM plus conditional access integration uh, is in public preview. What it means is as you elevate a role, uh, which is, could be an intra ID role or uh, Azure role, uh, it can be conditional access aware. So are you the right, a privileged user, can I evaluate those conditions as the role gets activated? So that feature is in public preview now. Uh, for workload identities, uh, there is a, a ID protection pattern and the new RBAC version two permission roles for groups. So uh, these are some of the new features that will start showing up. Uh, it's been running in private preview for some time. Public preview is happening this month. Okay, uh, on the ID protection, uh, what does ID protection offer? Uh, when you look at conditional access framework, you look at, uh, in a simple way, look at two types of patterns, static conditions, which is what you configure as an admin, location, user membership, uh, group membership, are you the right user, device compliance, but then you look at these uh, uh, risk behaviors and patterns, 
and ID protection offers that as a model and it seamlessly integrates with uh, uh, obviously not uh, just the Microsoft Sentinel and the XDR services but also can allow you to export logs to a third party SIM as well. Uh, for ID protection and authorization fields you will see that uh, the CAE which stands for conditional access, continuous access evaluation uh, is CAE a known term? Uh, okay, I see one hand, one nod, uh, one hand at the back. So think of it like when when somebody goes through a condition, and I'm, I'll go, I'll keep it simple for folks who don't know much about CAE. Uh, when you go through conditional access evaluation, uh, what happens? You get a token that is meant for that particular process, but there's a life for that token, and there is a duration for that token. What happens if there is a change in condition during that duration? What CAE does is it continuously evaluates and if there is a change, it will trigger the user to go through the conditional access process again. So that's a, a feature that's already live. What we are adding is now support for a location uh, enforcement. And you will see uh, for the remaining 60% customers who are not yet on the MFA journey, we have started this in-portal experience like how you can roll out MFA for your enterprise, some of the guided patterns for them. Um, I also gave us number this morning that 52% of our customers are still hybrid. When we look at those risk-based behaviors, we were talking about the users doing uh, password resets or password management in the cloud. But what about that 52%? So that is the next feature I'm uh, mentioning on the slide. Uh, for those 52% tenants who are look, still looking at on-premises for password reset, uh, there's this ID protection feature. And there's an, um, another alert coming in IT protection for looking at attacker in the middle detection. So for example, uh, together with our XDR friends, uh, the Defender friends, if some user clicks on a malicious link, can we, risk, can we alert that in the system that can be then handled by the SOC as a part of the integration. Okay, now I'm gonna sp spend my time on governance. Uh, governance um, uh, for the Microsoft stack is one of the three products under the identity access management pillar. Uh, many years ago, uh, when we were speaking to Gartner first, uh, in, I think it was around 2018, 2019, uh, we spoke about uh, it should not just be cloud prov uh, mastered identity management, but it should be also cloud governed uh, identity and access management solutions. So with that as a vision, we started with Azure AD and some of the features we started in our uh, governance stack like uh, entitlement management, access reviews, privilege identity management, uh, so that you could implement the zero trust principle. Uh, now in the new pattern, some of the new features that you see, this slide talks about a, a life cycle of a user, right from a pre-hire to maybe the on day one journey, how the user goes through maybe one department to another, and when the user goes through an alumni, how do you make sure you can make the onboarding JML process uh, simple and seamless. Um, so we have a capability called Identity Lifecycle Workflows, uh, part of the governance stack that covers uh, joiner, mover, lever. It comes with a bunch of templates for pre-hire, new hire, uh, lever, but it also gives you this option for extensibility. Like I may have a custom process. Uh, uh, I don't know if some of you saw the Ignite keynote that happened in November last year. Did anybody attend the Microsoft Ignite? Uh, one hand, another hand, right. So what was shown in that uh, keynote? I'll just summarize it and if you have not seen that, please do. Uh, the video covers a life cycle of a new hire. And it's a very common pattern. Somebody does the interview and somebody comes on day one. How do you know it is the right Rohit, Rohit who came through that journey, right? So, the journey starts from where that particular point when the recruiter is working with that gentleman or that person for that uh, recruitment process till the account gets created in the directory and then account gets provisioned in the application group membership. So that, and the journey talks about identity verification, then provisioning of a temporary access pass, which is a strong authentication. So no password, no more passwords going to strong authentication on day one. User, giving a, user was given a laptop, a blank laptop. User just switched it on. User just specified the email address, specified that strong authentication. The, the download takes the corporate image on the device. The device is configured with Windows Hello for Business. Authenticator is configured for passwordless. So passwordless from day one, no more password. And user is doing this self-service. 
admin is getting all the audit logs and it's very much a reality we have some production customers now using this pattern um, I spoke about this secure hybrid access slide uh, the reason why it is back here in this uh, governance section because it all starts with how do you provision uh, the accounts how do you connect your apps uh, and then it also covers some of the elements around how do you make sure the life cycle of the user even for guests is maintained uh, so when you invite a guest what the guest is doing in the uh, environment or the application is the guest really using the application for which that guest was provisioned if not can I do an attestation or clean up so all that comes as a part of the life cycle another thing that we came out with we, we, we are very fond of creating acronyms. We created an acronym called XTAP and then customers came back saying, what is XTAP? So uh, XTAP or stands for cross tenant access in a multi-tenant environment. There could be models where you, in a single enterprise, you may have multiple tenants or you are collaborating with multiple companies. So how do you bring that uh, MTO model uh, and how do you make sure that when you're collaborating with your partner organization, uh, you can scope the synchronization, you can look at auditing, uh, you can make sure the whole collaboration model is better. When I'm collaborating it using teams or applications, how can this whole model be better? So that is all MTO. Hot of the press, this was an announcement that happened yesterday. Uh, we have uh, been talking about connectors uh, deploying uh, uh, attributes in Azure AD, Intra ID, or Active Directory in the past, connectors coming from SAP SuccessFactor or Workday. But what about if I have an HR solution which is not in that main list? Can I have a generic HR connector? Can I do API-based inbound provisioning? So this is this new feature where uh, using API-based import provisioning, you could have any solution uh, that can provision accounts. Uh, into the directory and you can see it is helping in the whole life cycle of the uh, provisioning onboarding and application access journey so this feature is now generally available uh, some of the production customers are also now coming back to us are there any throttle limits so yes depending upon the premium SKU license you will have p1 will have a different limit p2 will have a different limit so please do look at if the documentation as you are going through the journey if that limit is of concern to you, give us feedback. But as we went to GA, we wanted to make sure nobody's abusing it. Uh, and hence, there are some limits for respective P1 and P2 licenses. Okay, uh, external ID, uh, uh, Marcus has a dedicated session uh, on, on this topic today. So I'll just, uh, just quickly summarize this. Uh, external identity uh, is a feature under, or a product under the identity access management pillar. The vision we have was to um, look at B2B as B and B2C together and can we ensure that uh, the protection, governance, control that Entra ID offers and the customization that uh, B2C offers, can we bring both best of both the worlds together under the same umbrella? And can we make the life of the customer simple? That, that, that is whole, that's the whole principle for external identity. Some of the things that are now GA, uh, let's say when you invite a B2B guest, uh, I'm sure all of you have completed this problem in the past. Like so I'm, if I'm going into a partner's team's channel, I had to switch tenants on the team's client. Uh, so that is one of the feedbacks that we have implemented that is listed on the slide. We are also talking about uh, when a B2B guest is invited and your application has a conditional access framework for in your tenant, the B2B guest used to have a lot of problems because they need to go through a conditional access evaluation in your tenant. Now we will honor and we are honoring the, uh, the conditional access coming from their home tenant as well. Uh, if you want to know more details about it, please uh, connect with me and I can share more about it. Um, on the uh, public preview side, um, uh, you could look at the tenant restriction uh, version two where you could look at allow or block of users uh, when you are uh, setting up that uh, resource access from the framework and you will see this tenant restriction also now integrated with our security service edge offering remember the yellow block that I had in my first slide so we will talk a little bit more about that okay I'm going to talk about verified ID now uh, and I'm looking at my clock I have 15 minutes so 
10 minutes, right? So I will, I'll try to just cover the highlights. Uh, verified ID is, uh, as I said, uh, open standard implementation of verifiable credential. Uh, it is, uh, I think, a term that most of us have heard so many times, decentralized identity, which means giving the credential to the user, giving the power to the user so that they get to choose what they are presenting, to whom they are presenting, and they're giving their explicit consent. Yes, I'm okay for you to take my date of birth because if I don't give you my date of birth, maybe I cannot purchase this bottle of wine. So I need to go through these kind of patterns. Uh, and if you look at the representation of this uh, technology, uh, it is very similar to what we see in our wallets, uh, the native wallets like cards. Um, and this pattern allows us to uh, scan QR codes or just respond to a link and then present this attestation. So think of verifiable credential. Uh, so if, if you are new to this track, verifiable credential as a standard, what it means is if this card is for Rohit, how do I qualify what is Rohit? Who is Rohit? So the set of attestations about a subject defines a verifiable credential. Like if you look at your government issued passport, it has details about you, like you are a citizen, this is your address, this is your date of birth. That's a qualified attestation from, a, from the government body that this is you, who you are. That's the same concept in verifiable credential. So it's a digital version of such attestation. The issuer could be a government authority, it could be an identity verification partner, it could be an employer, uh, it could be a training provider. And the, the beauty about it is it could be the user himself or herself as well. Do you like spicy food? Yes, I do like spicy food. Uh, and this, these kind of patterns then can be used uh, for business processes. Like for example, for the same use case, just imagine uh, when we are getting and ordering food, the, 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 question, the common question I hear is, on a scale of five, how spicy I should make your food? Why should I be asked these kind of questions? As I check in in a hotel uh, for my meal, can't I just respond my preferences by responding to a QR code, right? So those kind of patterns. So, uh, so this pattern uh, is implemented as a managed service. Uh, it is coming from a single API uh, that allows you to issue and verify. Um, and there are multiple providers available that covers uh, identity proofing patterns. There are ISV solutions, there are employers. Uh, and there's an open source library. You saw Authenticator app. There's an Authenticator app represented on the right, left hand side on the screenshot. I'm sure you love Authenticator. But let's say if you have your own branded app, uh, it doesn't stop you to uh, use that wallet library in your component. One of the customers in UK, Department of Education, uh, they are running a production pilot for further education students. Because what happens a student when they're supposed to fill in the application, I did that. I was just so lazy. Just the night before it, I started filling the form. And I, make, I made a lot of mistakes. So what they are doing is, as a student, I have my credential, my attestations, my unique learner record number, which is something very common in UK. Can I present that as a part of my application? And one feedback they gave me was, hey, I know Microsoft is blue. It's a fancy color. But Crown logo has more importance than Microsoft logo. So I'm going to build my own branded app. Voila. So, okay, so they are now building their own app and they're going live with that. As an enterprise where you can use this, uh, there's a new feature that came out, uh, face check, which is uh, this particular phone I have, my, my wife could also have access to this phone. Uh, maybe if, if there's a QR code, she could also scan and respond to that QR code. How do I know it is the right user who's responding to that QR code? That is that face check, which is like a biometric check of a live selfie that the authenticator captures and compares it with the photo that is there in the card. Where should I use it as an enterprise as you go back? I think one thing I would ask you to think about, now in the last two months when this feature just came out, I am seeing a crazy wave. I'm sure a lot of you know about the MGM attack. Um, so how do I make sure my IT help desk process is secure? I think think about that pattern. When somebody calls up at the help desk, what happens? Hey, can you tell me your employee ID number? Can you tell me your location? And then there's a verbal handshake. Is that good enough? Is that secure enough? You can secure that channel by using verifiable credential in that model. And you can get this service on by default in one minute. So in verified ID blade, you will see this get started button. Just click on it, the service comes online. Because I'm sure all of you are M365 customers. Uh, 
uh, your domain is already verified. So click on this button. You can get a template called verified employee from enter ID as a source, which has those graph attributes about the user. And then you can scope it out to get verified employee. You can obviously then work with partners like Kocho to add more templates and credentials, but you can get this service up and running in one minute. One minute. Uh, and look at the patterns. You can Im implement this pattern as an inline process in your service desk or like a, a dedicated solution. Partners like Kocho can help you on that as you go through this journey. So somebody calls up the help desk, help desk says, hey, I'm sending you a link or here there is a link, please reply to that link by scanning a QR code. Uh, the, the user supplies a verified employee card, takes a face check. The whole response can be then sent as a webhook to the ticketing tool as well. So no manual update on the ticketing tool. The, the payload can be sent automatically to your ticketing tool. It could be ServiceNow, BMC, Remedy, it doesn't matter. As long as it understands API, simple. Oh, and one last thing I would say, sorry, I think I saw some people taking screenshots. Uh, there are some samples available. You can add automations as well. How do you know he or she is the right user who was onboarded on MFA? Because to onboard an MFA, you're sending a process. And I send it to user X, but somebody took that email and went through that journey as well. So you can bring in uh, some onboarding and bootstrapping process for strong authentications as well with verified ID. Okay, last few slides. Uh, enter permission management, as I said, is our uh, solution under the cloud infrastructure entitlement management category, the KIM category. Uh, and it's a solution that allows you to look at your in, uh, infrastructure deployments on AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, and look at, do you have users who are over-provisioned? If yes, can I do take some actions on that? So it looks at that model and gives you that visibility. You can set it up in like a reporting mode or in a modern model way of maybe remediating things as well. Okay, now let's spend a few minutes on uh, the internet access and private access. So. This particular track, which is that network access theme, uh, we announced this track as public preview in Ignite uh, last year. And uh, this pattern is getting so much traction that uh, from engineering now we are saying that I think uh, we need to get, let the partners run the show. And why it's so important? Because this pattern is ensuring that your looking at secure web gateway models for your internet apps. You're implementing zero trust network access solution for your line of business apps. You're going VPN less in the journey and you are not excluding your M365 traffic. Uh, in a lot of implementations today, when you do for secure service edge or SASE implementation, you exclude M365 traffic for inspection. Why? Because uh, if you have a third party provider, that third party provider adds a network overhead when somebody tries to access Teams or OneDrive or SharePoint Online. Uh, so since this service is in the same endpoint zone as the M365 traffic, there is no performance overhead. For if you are an M365 customer, you can get this service up and running uh, by just a click of a button. Uh, you will see that you will all end up setting up conditional access policies. Um, it will allow you to there's, there's one differentiator as well vis-a-vis -vis other, there are many, I spoke about performance, but another important thing is when you look at a third party provider versus the Microsoft offering, the challenge we see is uh, I'm not able to get the source IP of the client from where the traffic was generated, which actually breaks my conditional access policy. Here in this pattern, we preserve the source IP of the client. Uh, you're not seeing the routers or edge device IP, you're seeing the source client IP as well. So you can do those kind of uh, enforcements and there's a universal conditional access engine. So uh, the thing about a, a model where a user is working from home, they're connecting to a SaaS app or a line of business app, all they go through is uh, an evaluation for conditional access so that they are compliant to your network. And once they're compliant to the network, Basis the type of application, you can do a further level of enforcements on conditional access. Maybe uh, for productivity, I'm okay with the outer conditional access evaluation, but maybe there is a SaaS app, which is a financial app, 
I need to do a further enforcement of conditional access. So you could do all that, such kind of patterns with it. Uh, one thing before I move to the next slide, internet access theme uh, covers two types of services for SaaS. One it is uh, Microsoft 365 apps, and the other one is any Sa other SaaS app like ServiceNow, Salesforce. Um, so both these uh, tracks uh, are uh, under the internet access theme. For M365 uh, SKU, you already have this capability covered. There's some work we're also doing with our Defender friends, uh, Defender for Endpoint. The, the plan we have is to make sure that uh, the Defender for Endpoint client that you may run on your Android and iOS devices can reuse that same client and don't install a separate client. Uh, it supports Linux, Mac, uh, and uh, Windows machines as well. Uh, private access theme is all about uh, uh, ZTNA implementation, VPN-less implementation for line of business app. Uh, I spoke about App Proxy in the past. App Proxy was a connector-based offering. Think of it like a reverse proxy connector, but it was uh, initially designed for HTTP-based apps. Uh, but what about non-HTTP-based apps? Like, uh, 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 and maybe let's say an SAP application uh, or a file server or an RDP. How do I secure that traffic? And traffic could be on TCP or UDP channels. Uh, so private access covers that theme. Uh, there are a bunch of capabilities that are offered under it. Some are right now in the works. Uh, just two things I will say and then we'll close this slide. Um, there are, so the, this pattern ensures that you can go VPN less, so you're not, no, dependent, no dependency of installing a VPN client. But what if, if I have a VPN set up today, this whole pattern can coexist as well, both internet access and private access. Uh, there is some work happening around micro segmentation as well. Like, there's a SQL process running on my application. Can I just make sure that the user only has access to the SQL process? Why should I give access to the whole application or the VM? So there's work happening around the micro segmentation piece as well. Uh, the plan is to uh, talk about the, uh, the capabilities as general availability next quarter. Uh, both internet access and private access are running in public preview right now, going to general availability next quarter. So that was my last slide. Uh,